Hey there, welcome to this Koala Sampler tutorial episode. And as you can see from the title, today we are diving back into another tutorial all about sampling and sampling techniques. And I've got two to show you today that kind of live in the same sort of family for me, some very similar in kind of the way they operate and kind of the way that we need to set them up using Koala. Now, the first one is going to be called a 16 velocity technique. Now that's actually based on a function that exists or like a mode that exists inside of MPC. Uh, like the Akai NPCs and of course then like uh, your machine Mark 3 can do it and the SP404 I think you can do it as well uh, the Mark 2 anyway now what it does is it essentially takes one sample that we're working with and I'll play you the samples in a second it's going to split it over 16 pads and on each of those pads the volume or the velocity is going to change and it usually steps up the way or you know you can play it in reverse so it can like step down um, but essentially it's going to go from like the quietest pad all the way through to like the loudest pad and i'm going to set that up and show you how to do it now unfortunately inside of koala it isn't a function so it's something that if we want to mimic that technique we have to do this and we have to do it manually because yeah at the time that i'm making this video it's not a uh, it's not an included function with koala so let me play you a couple of the samples that we're going to be working with the first one is this kind of horn stab that we've got here Very simple stuff, just cropped down from an old jazz record, but it will work well to kind of demonstrate this point. And this kind of 16 velocity technique was used a lot in sort of 90s hip hop, uh, especially with like horn stabs and things. Uh, I don't know who kind of came up with it first, but I think Pete Rock was one of the first person, uh, you know, the first people that I heard using this technique. So the other thing I've got set up is just some drums. I'll play you a little bit of those. And that's just simply so that I've got something to kind of demonstrate this along to. Uh, and then I've got another sample here for the next technique and we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to set this up to do the 16 velocity uh, kind of trick or technique. So I'm going to drag this to a set of fresh 16 pads. So I'm going to drop it down to pad bank B. And I'm going to stick it on the bottom left here. Now you can do this with the choke group applied or with the choke group turned off. It's something that you can experiment with whether you want the samples to kind of overlap each other which can be interesting. In this particular technique I'm going to have a choke group set to one on this pad so that as I duplicate my pads over now I am yeah I'm going to have it so each of these pads you know chokes the other one off. Um, now it's going to get a little bit annoying as I just copy these over for a second but unfortunately that's just the way it goes. Sounds like a uh, clown horn, pretty annoying, but it gets us set up and in the right space. Now, I'm going to start with the bottom left pad here, and I'm going to work kind of left to right, moving through, kind of snaking along. So this is the quietest pad, and this is going to be the loudest pad. And we're going to do that just simply by playing around with the volume slider. So if we go to our first pad here, I'm going to bring the volume right the way down and just have it so it's, you know, barely audible. And then as we skip through onto each pad, I'm just going to start knocking this volume slider up by an increment just so that it's um, it's going to get progressively louder as it runs through the samples. Now, I'm going to do this in a rush because I'm trying to show you guys and not take three hours to do it. But I want to, you know, you if you've got the time on your hands, you can be a lot more precise with this and just take your time to get your like little increments, uh, you know, in a better way that I'm going to do here. So let's take the next pad and roughly I'm just going to guess that it's a little bit louder. Same here. And of course it's not an exact science the way I'm doing this here and I need to hope that I've got enough room to get all 16 kind of velocity changes here. If you want to have a quick skip through and just check that you are stepping up, just look at your little black marker on the volume bar here as you flick through. And yeah, I can see it's like stepping up. It's not, you know, stepping up in perfect increments, but it's okay. So where did we get up to? We're here. Let's go a little bit louder. Oops, sorry. Let's go back here, here then. And of course, you can go a little bit louder with things inside of Koala, so we can start to increase that volume. 
good enough. Apologies for how annoying that is when you have to go over these things and kind of repeat it. But I didn't want to have to set my choke groups later individually, so I want them all set up now. And of course, I want them all set as one shots. So you can see what I've done there. As we step up through the pads, we get these small increases in volume from the lowest here to the highest here. And then what that allows us to do, if we do a little bit of a quick demonstration, if I go back to my pad bank here, uh, pad bank A, and I find my drums, let's just set the drums off and I'll do a quick demonstration of how you can manipulate the sample in time with your beat and get these kind of nice kind of cascading like fading effects. So not my best tune, of course, but you get the idea. By manipulating that sample across 16 pads with different volume changes or velocity changes, we can get these really cool, like, overlapping kind of, uh, or not overlapping in that case because we had the choke group set on, but we can have the samples kind of dip in and out and have some kind of, like, yeah, kind of, like, cascading sort of fading effects. And as I said, take a listen to old 90s hip-hop stuff. Pete Rock or whoever, uh, you will hear a lot of that. It's a really cool technique. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Try turning your choke group off and having the samples like overlap each other, uh, whatever it could be. It could be like a vocal sample or something. You're going to get some really interesting effects and fade in and fade outs. Now, it would be great to see that as a function built into Koala so that we could take one sample hit a button and it's going to split it for us. But for now, that's, uh, you know, it's a bit of a hacky workaround, but you can do it. Now, the next technique, as I said, to me, feels like it's in the same family as this first one, feels like a similar kind of thing here. Um, and it's essentially manipulating the same sample again uh, across. Now, it doesn't have to be the same sample. You could manipulate multiple different samples the same as you could with the 16 velocity you don't know always have to have it exactly the same sample repeating could be something similar and you'll get you know some kind of effect but we're going to use this one shot here or this you know this little clip so let me play you that first again just taken from an old jazz record it fits roughly in time to our beat. It's not, you know, BPM matched, but if I play that over the drums, sounds good enough. There's like the timing and the rhythm of it is fine. It's just an example. Now, what I want to do is we'll stay on this first pad bank here, but I'll get rid of this sample first. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of copies of this. So let's, uh, yeah, let's just duplicate this pad over. And I'm not going to do 16 in here. Of course, you could do as many as you like. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Now, the first ones will do the kind of the easy way. So the first sample, what I'm going to say here is that I want it to be uh, just completely as it is. Now, unfortunately, like the other technique has a name, like 16 velocity. It's very common throughout sampling, particularly if you've used like a uh, yeah an MPC or something like that. This one, I don't really have a particular name for it. Uh, so I'm just going to call it like a filtering and effects technique. And what we're essentially saying is that this first sample is the sample as it is completely fine. I like it. Then on the next sample here, I'm going to come in into this edit window. And just for a quick hack again, let's just take all the highs out of this one. So you can see the difference there in tone. Then on the next one, again, quick hack. Let's take all the low end out. And I'm sure you can kind of see where we're going already. The only other thing I want to show you is that if you want to apply more creative effects in here, of course, we have our performance effects inside of Koala, which are really good. Unfortunately, again, as a function, it would be great if you could kind of assign an effect to a pad, but you can't. So we have to do that in the, you know, 
kind of bodge it and scarper kind of way. So if we look at our um, mode here, I just want to make sure that we're set to resample. I'm going to turn this on and use the hold function. So as we do this, it's going to hold it for us. I'm going to choose the effect that I want to apply. So let's say we want to apply some delay to one of these pads. We can do this and we can hold it. And then I can simply press my pad here and it's going to record over here. We get that nice fade out and the delay tail and everything happening in here. We can then stop this. What is clever about Koala is that it finds the beginning of your sample for you so that you don't need to. If we look in the edit window, you can see it's brought the start marker all the way over to the beginning of the sample, saves us having to do it. Um, you can also, if you want to be neat and tidy, you could come down and crop this just so that it looks right on the pad and everything else. Um, but that's one. So we can delete this one out of the way and we can take this one. And what I need to do just to make sure that when we play this and do a bit of an example is that I want to make sure this has its choke group turned back on because when you resample, you haven't assigned any choke group to this. I know these are all choke group two. So I'm going to turn that on and now this will play like the rest of them. And we can check for things like volume. But now when we play through, Uh, we'll also need to make sure it's a one shot, of course. You can hear that we've now got some delay in here. Now that might not be the best effects to use. This is just a demonstration of how you bake these effects in. So that's going to be up to you and your creativity and whatever you want to do with it. Now we're going to do the same thing again here. Let's just delete this one out of the way because we don't need it. Let me apply something else to this that's like a little bit more obvious. So if we take this pad, let's do the same again. Still resampling. Hold this on choose another effect and what's cool is that of course you could you know apply multiple effects here with this hold function let's say i wanted a little bit of talk box and some delay and whatever other effects it was going to be i can apply all of those to that one pad and kind of resample it in um, and that resampling technique in itself um, I think I did a video all about that. If I haven't, I will do. But that's just super useful being able to kind of bake audio and effects in. So let's do talk box on this one. I'm sure it will make a bit of a difference. Let's go over here and just press our pad again. And that gives us that talk box effect applied. If we open this up here, we can see again that it's found the start point for us. I'm just going to crop this down. And because of this particular kind of effect, you lose quite a bit of the volume in here. So I'm just going to do normalize and get that kind of back up just so that you guys can hear it as I'm playing around with it. We're going to delete this one, shift this one into place, get rid of that one, and just set what we need to set in here again, which is a choke group of two, and make sure that I do the one shot this time. So now when we play them, oh, why have we lost one shot there? Ah, of course. Make sure you turn your perform effects back off. And very quickly, just for the fun of it, let's just do that with the bit of the beat playing. not going to be my finest beat but you get the idea you get where I'm uh, going with this so that is the second technique which as I said I don't particularly have a name for that but I would call it like a filter and effects technique and it's to sum it up it is simply just applying a different effect to the same sample or it could be multiple different samples within like a loop uh, I don't know say you've got the first part of a bar or something you've chopped out you can make that first part sample the next part um, you know the first part filtered even the next part with some other effect and the next part it's completely up to you and of course you can go wild with all of these things and get like super creative with it but i think it's particularly 
effective, similar to the 16 velocity, when you use the same sample, because of course you just get these really nice changes between the two things. And if you've got maybe a track with a loop running, it's another way to add variation and interest for like the listener if it's like switching about and you know as i said maybe when this next sample comes in if it's kind of filtered down you layer something else over the top of that so that there's a change in the track there's you know as you can see there's lots of potential there for where you could go with it so that's going to be it for this episode i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've learned something and i'll see you guys in the next one take care